Hey guys, welcome back to Ganchi Plans. Today I am doing a little bit of yard work out here in the garden. It's been a pretty nice warm weather lately, though it has been a little bit muggier than usual. Uh, but I needed to do some trimming of the grass around this little story stump area that we have near the tree in the middle of our backyard. And um, doing this and a couple other things, I've, I've been spending a lot of time in the garden recently. I know that if you've been following me, you've probably seen that. I have a recent garden update uh, to my Instagram stories that is highlighted as well if you want to check that out. But today I'm mostly talking about this grass. This is the lawn that we put in from Sod a year ago. And I've been sort of thinking about it as we do some maintenance of it. My husband mostly does the mowing, but I've been helping a little bit. And it's kind of been highlighting some lessons that I think are interesting for me. So I thought that I would try to put them into words for you today because I needed a video topic idea while I trim the grass. The first thing we really learned over the course of this last year having the grass. This is zoysia, which is a variety of grass that does go dormant in the winter. We don't get frost here, but the weather does cool down and the grass actually does turn pretty brown over the winter. And it was pretty weird to see that happening. It was difficult early on uh, to know whether the grass was starting to go dormant or was starting to die because we weren't sure early on exactly what normal was, what healthy looked like, um, whether maybe one or two pieces of the sod wasn't taking properly or wasn't getting enough water, was getting too much water. It was early, easy to be really discouraged by that. And then again, as we came into the spring and started to look at maintaining it uh, over the, the summer and into the summer months, things were not getting green right away. And so it was hard to tell whether we had killed it over the winter. We let a lot of weeds grow over the rainy season in the winter. And we needed to um, go through and, you know, take all those weeds out. But I was worried that they had maybe either choked out some of the grass or just prevented it from getting the sunlight it needed. And so basically that trust of like, is it dormant? Is it dead? We had to only trust the expertise of like the videos that we were able to watch and the research we were able to do. But just because something seems like it's dead means, does not necessarily mean that it won't come back is the lesson that we've learned here that maybe a hobby in your life or maybe a relationship that you haven't spoken to someone in a long time, just because something is dormant in your life does not mean that it's dead. It might still come back if you were able to cultivate it, to give it the best kind of care that you have at your disposal, at your ability to do. The reason that I'm out here today trimming this grass is actually my next lesson, the progress that I was not able to see because we were paying too close attention to something. And obviously you have to pay attention to details when you're in the nitty gritty, but it's important to step back every so often and look at the big picture. When we first put in the sod, we trimmed this oval shape around the tree and then put in the log and put in the wood chips and we circled it with rocks, river rocks, to give it a little bit of a border, thinking, sure, the rocks will kind of keep the grass in its place as sort of a, a barrier and also gives it a little bit of a visual barrier. Meanwhile, we were looking at spots on the grass where the dog had peed or where water had pooled when it rained. Certain spots of the lawn were not doing as great health-wise that were looking browner or yellow, and we were kind of worried about those. Also some, you know, bare patches that didn't overwinter quite as well. And so this whole spring and uh, into the summer, we've been looking in at those trouble spots and we've been, you know, going, well, this is supposed to be a very invasive species of grass. It's supposed to be a good ground cover. Where is that invasive property right now when there's this brown spot in the middle? Well, we were paying too much attention to that. We didn't realize this whole time the grass had actually encroached, had climbed up to the rocks and over them by a, a few inches, three, four inches in places and had, the runners had gone over the rocks, brought dirt along with them, and then burrowed into the wood chips that were there, the mulch in the circle, as well as through the weed barrier plastic and into the ground. 
So it's definitely making that kind of healthy progress that we need it to, maybe not always in the places that we'd like it to, but it's very encouraging to see that yes, it is behaving the way it's supposed to. And I think we just have to have a little bit more patience with some of those more bare patches that we were worried about. You know, keep up doing the same thing because obviously what we're doing is working. Um, and if it's working in one place, it will probably work in the next place, just eventually. So there are some spots in our lawn that we're not super happy with. There's an area, like I said, that's yellow and brown and that uh, gets a little bit too much water and we need to try to even it out because it's settled a little bit and you know, it was a home job, we did it ourselves and so it's not perfectly flat. So a lot of our weekends in quarantine have been spent out here trimming the edges, mowing the lawn, trying to put down fertilizer. We were thinking about doing some overseeding to fix some of those bare spots. But I think it's important that we are at the same time not just focusing on improving the spots that need help, but also in enjoying the spots that are doing well. And when we step back, or if you even like go and just stand on the grass and bare feet or sit down on it and look at it up close, you see how healthy some of these spots are. There are some absolutely gorgeous lush areas of this yard. And now that we have our almost two-year-old who is really enjoying spending time outside, running around, hopping around, kicking her ball, it's been really, really valuable to us to be able to appreciate the things that are going well while still working on the spots that are not going quite as well. Focusing on those two things equally, I think is very important. And finally, the thing that we're trying to tell ourselves and remember about the grass is to not be so afraid to ruin what you have that you're afraid to use it and to enjoy it. Our toddler absolutely loves her water table and when we pull it out onto the grass for her to play with, her very favorite thing is to just take the bucket of water and pour it on the grass. Now obviously grass loves water, but there is such a thing as too much watering. And so I always go, oh no, you know, she overwaters and then she's running around on it. It's vulnerable if it's all soggy. What if she's gonna, you know, destroy the grass? She hasn't. In fact, the areas that she has used the water table in are some of the healthiest areas of the lawn. And so I think that it's just important to be able to appreciate what you have while you have it instead of just worrying about losing it. We're willing to pull our, you know, her equipment out onto the grass and play with it. Yes, we put it away at the end of the night when we, you know, try to so that we don't, um, you know, block the sunlight or the water from getting to the grass when it's needed. But being able to go out there and enjoy it, it's the reason we have it there in the first place. And uh, it's really important, I think, to enjoy what you have without just worrying about losing it. I think the same lesson is applied in how our daughter has been sleeping lately. We have been so blessed for the last few months that she she had like a brief little bit of a nap strike period where she just didn't want to go down didn't want to go down to bed or to sleep but that probably lasted like maybe a week and since then she has been so good at going to sleep and i'm sorry if you're currently in the thick of it we've been there too but right now where we are is we have a toddler who We'll agree, yes, I want to take a nap when you offer her one, and then we'll, you know, cheerfully wave night-night and say I love you goodbye when you leave the room and fall asleep on her own within minutes. And at first, my instinct was don't talk about it, don't admit that it's happening, <laughs> don't tell anyone about it because you're going to ruin it, you're going to jinx it. Obviously, like, I don't believe in that, it's just human nature, I think, to want to try to control something that's uncontrollable. It's the unknowable universe. She will definitely at some point go through another phase of not sleeping well, but right now she's in a good place and I am trying my best to just enjoy it while it's there. So that's the same with the grass. Just enjoy it while it's happening and, you know, if things get worse later on, if you need to troubleshoot things and fix things later, um, then so be it. But for now, what you have is a great sleeping toddler who loves to play on some beautiful grass. So I don't know if these lessons are applicable to anyone else in their life right now. These are just a couple of random thoughts that I had and I thought I would share them. Let me know down in the comments if any of them did resonate with you. And don't forget to subscribe. I post videos twice a week. So I will see you in the next one on Thursday. Bye.